Hello and welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. Today we're going to be making Stone Ground Artisan French Bowl. Um, this is a round bread and I'm making it from a stone ground uh, wheat um, that actually got sent to me accidentally. It was a stone ground Italian um, pizza flour that is also good for bread. Uh, we're going to take that today and this is a recipe that I've made before on my YouTube channel. Um, we're going to modify that recipe slightly by a few things we had to change because it is stone ground wheat. Uh, and I'll show you those changes and we're going to move forward from there. So very firstly, let's get three cups of flour together and we're going to put that into a large bowl. Into that flour, we're going to place one teaspoon of salt. And what you want to do, you can use any type of salt you want. This is regular table salt here, uh, Morton iodized salt. You want to make sure that you stir that into the flour and you want to incorporate it. You don't want a big pile of salt sitting somewhere in your flour that could end up with a salty batch in your dough later. So you want to make sure that's well incorporated. And I initially forgot to add my half teaspoon measuring spoon. So the one thing we did change with this recipe for the stone ground flour is I added twice the amount of yeast that is in the regular one. So a half teaspoon of yeast I put into a combination of very hot water out of the spigot with a tablespoon of honey in that water. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix that yeast in there and you're going to let it activate. So you're going to let it sit for 10 minutes um, and try to get that yeast going. And I want to show you that I got this Italian style flour from Jane's Mill. You're going to take your wet ingredients and you're going to pour them into the dry ingredients. You're going to mix the dry ingredients well. And you'll notice that this stone ground flour is really taking the water up much more so than the original recipe. With all purpose flour, you get kind of a batter more than you get a dough. But with this stone ground wheat, you actually are going to get a very nice dough ball that is going to form. And I had to use my hands to incorporate all of the flour into this with some kneading in the bowl and trying to get it into the shape of a nice ball here and making sure that all of the flour was well incorporated. And you can see we were finished with a nice ball. What you're going to do is you're going to cover that with a lid and you're going to set it aside for three hours. After three hours, you're going to uncover the dough and you can see mine has doubled in size. And again, you can see that this is not a batter. You're going to take a lightly floured surface. You're going to turn the dough out onto that surface with a dough scraper. And you're going to knead the dough by folding it at 90 degree angles. You're going to quarter turn and fold quarter turn and fold, quarter turn and fold. And you're going to, by folding, you're going to try to shape this into a ball. This is helping you develop gluten. And you'll see people when they form these balls, they try to get in a nice ball with as few seams as possible. They'll roll it on the surface and pull the dough back towards them. And we're trying to get a nice smooth ball of dough. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put some parchment paper into a proofing bowl. Make sure you put parchment paper down. You don't have to have a proofing bowl, but you can use whatever you have. And I'm going to put the dough on top of the parchment paper and I'm going to cover it with a towel. Now I set this aside for an hour and a half. In the original recipe, it is only a half hour, but that's with the all-purpose flour. With this stone ground flour, you've got to let it rise longer or you're going to end up with a dough that did not rise and a very dense, low profile loaf. So we're going to take our dough, we're going to uncover our dough, and now you're going to score the dough. And I tried to get a little crafty here by, since this was a whole wheat dough, I thought I would make the shape of a wheat kernel across the top of it. I'm not very artsy, but I used a razor blade and I tried to score it and then make it look a little bit like a leaf of wheat. While you're doing this, you want to have your oven with your oven safe Dutch oven inside 
preheating to 450 degrees. So you want your oven and the Dutch oven to be at 450 degrees. Once that happens, you're gonna take your scored dough close to your Dutch oven. You're gonna get the Dutch oven out of the regular baking oven. And you're gonna take parchment and all and put it into the Dutch oven. You're going to replace the lid and you want to do this because you're holding in moisture to give you that artisan crust and you're going to place the whole thing back into the 450 degree oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you're going to take the Dutch oven out of the baking oven. You're going to remove the lid. And you're going to remove the dough from the parchment and place it back into the Dutch oven. And you'll see that it's very free from the parchment and the Dutch oven here. It almost looks like a regular loaf of bread already. Now you're going to place that Dutch oven back into the baking oven for another 10 minutes without the lid. This is going to enhance your crust. Lastly, you're going to take the bread and Dutch oven out of your oven, out of your baking oven, and you're going to allow it to cool. Now everybody likes hot bread and it does taste delicious. And I have to tell you, this loaf tasted particularly delicious. But hot bread is hard to cut and sometimes it'll squash your loaf when you're trying to do that. So I tried to let this one cool before we used it. This was actually supposed to be set for some bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. So I set it aside and let it cool. And the final product actually did sort of look like a grain of wheat or a leaf of wheat across the top of the loaf. And it tasted delicious. So if you found this helpful and you were able to make the bread, I'd appreciate any comments you have. Any criticisms, please try to be kind though. Uh, if it was really helpful, please subscribe to my channel. It would really help me with YouTube. So thanks again for stopping by at Bites Bread and Barbecue.